Father Neuhaus, we hear a lot about uh, the great challenges facing the Church of the Middle East, Christians of the Middle East. We often hear about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict in, in the Holy Land in Israel. Um, and we hear about all the different cultures, the different languages, the different religions. It's a very complex situation here. Now, you work for the Mother Church. You work in the Church of the Holy Land. What do you see as the mission of the Church here? The question of mission is intimately connected with the question of who are we, our identity. Now, we are living in times that are very threatening. I think that the whole world has become aware of how threatened Christians are, whether it's in the Holy Land or throughout the neighboring countries. And that means that many Christians are living in fear. Fear means, in human terms, putting up bound, putting up walls, trying to feel safe. That can also mean, of course, migrating, leaving, to find safer places. And those that remain want to live in a Christian world, create some kind of safe Christian world. I think that the mission of the church is to counter that. First of all, to say fear is not a good teacher. Of course, we cannot totally dismiss fear. That would be foolish and we are, caused to be, we are called to be wise. But we must not give in to fear. And then I would say that the mission certainly touches on two extremely important issues. One is, we have no power in this situation. We don't have political power, financial power, or almost any kind of viable influence to change reality. But we do have something that is extremely powerful, and that is the word. The word we speak, the discourse we use in order to talk about the general situation, who we are, who everyone else is, and what we see as the possibilities of newness breaking in. Christian language. I think that here when we speak about evangelization in our context, it means speaking unashamedly, as Christians, disciples of Jesus, in this very difficult situation. Which means that not only are certain words forbidden, we can't call anybody enemy. That's not to say that we are stupid and we don't recognize where evil is, where injustice is, but enemy is a word that we don't use. We are driven by a dynamic of love as Christians. What does that mean? In very real, practical terms in our day-to-day -day lives, what does that mean when it comes to Muslims, when it comes to Jews, when it comes to all those around us that if we were simply driven by nature, we would fear them. We might even hate them. We might even seek to totally disassociate ourselves from them. How do we talk about them? How do we talk about what is possible in this land? Intimately associated with the question of what language do we speak, is the question of our Christian institutions. Our future is intimately connected with those institutions we have historically built, those institutions we are building, and these institutions incarnate our language. What am I speaking about specifically? Our schools, our hospitals, our clinics, our social work outreaches. And we notice something which is very important when we look around this country. In our schools, everyone is welcome. In our hospitals, everyone is treated. Now this everyone is the evangelical everyone. When we set up church, we pull the walls down because we want to go out as Jesus was always going out. And in a time when that is threatening, when people will say, that's, that's dangerous, Stay at home, put up tall walls, close the doors, close the windows. The church's mission is to do exactly the contrary. To go out and look in the society for those who share our vision, who are threatened by those who threaten us. So that we can work together and open up the society to what is possible, even though it seems impossible right now.